You're welcome. Hello, folks. Been a long time. Been a long time since I clicked the live button on Facebook. And uh, that motherfucker clean. Yeah, yeah, G. Yeah, it's been a long time since I clicked the live on old Facebook. But everything is good on my end. Everything is quite peaceful and beautiful, just like I expected it to be. But trust me, there's a twist to it. There is a twist to it. I've created myself a paradise. Everything is calm. You hear the birds chirping. The sun is kissing me on my skin. The people are pleasant. It's a beautiful life. And as y'all know, I'm a father and a grandfather, a brother, a son, a uncle, and a nephew. I'm respected in the community and I'm treated with good respect. People speak to me and if they talk about me, they talk about me elsewhere not in my face. So I fought to create a peaceful environment and a reality, and a reality. Some say you show sure grown. Some say you have showed mature. He's elite. And I appreciate all those escalades, or shall I say accolades. But it's something about a peaceful existence. It's almost like I've made a mistake. <coughs> but we're not gonna go into that yet. We're gonna go back into the zone of peace, blessings, and harmony. Doing the right thing all the time, trying to do right by people. It's testy and it's hard to do. But at the end result, you get a good reward. You get a nice, good, peaceful lifestyle. Excuse me. <clears throat> So doing the right thing by people and everything like that, you get a nice, peaceful, glorious lifestyle. And I've done right. I've done right. And everything is good. Everything is calm. But I got one discrepancy. I got one little discrepancy. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Uh, Mr. Stephen Tate, on my situation. Get it, get it. It's actually put a damper on my situation. All this friendly Bob, all this world peace. So at least twice or thrice a month, I actually need me an adversary. I done laid there, you understand? And became Uncle Phil around this hoe. 
And it's costing me, man. I don't want much. I just want a ball. You know what I'm saying? But it's costing me, man. All this so beautiful, nice, friendly, compassionate shit. It's costing me, man. <laughs> I don't want much. I just want a ball. You know what I'm saying? I made some choices in the game. I chose this lane. And it's costing me, man. <laughs> My God. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I know, I know Bundy G feel me. I'm thankful. But, but come on, man. I know somebody don't like my motherfucker. <laughs> I know a whole bunch of niggas don't like my motherfucking ass. But this what, this what I need you to do. I need you to just not like me enough. Don't, don't like, don't, don't, don't dislike me to the point where you want to get in my personal space. But just, just dislike me a little bit to where you could, to where you could tell me fuck me. Shit. Now damn. Hmm. Nigga, nigga, nigga jump online and tell me fuck me or something. God damn. I know I'm a good dude. And it's hard, it's hard to go against a nigga who good. But it's profitable. Nah. You friendly ass motherfuckers then cost me upwards to the amount of a thousand dollars or better. You friendly ass motherfuckers then cost me upward to the amount of a thousand dollars or better. God damn. Shit. Somebody need to tell me some disgruntled shit. Look, next month. Next month, we ain't on that friendly shit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. I seen. I seen that shit. Uh, I could have paid my motherfucking uh, child support on uh, uh, motherfucking car notes and shit. I could have paid some bills. But niggas is niggas nice. I guess I put so much good energy out there. That's all I got coming back. But next month, I might have to try something different. I might have to tell a couple niggas, fuck you in your ass, bitch ass nigga. <coughs> and fight a nigga in your hood. Don't fight me. <laughs> I done got kind of old. Shit. I can't even come out here and run just yet. I come out here and walk a couple miles and my feces go to hurt. But now, nah, I'm doing better. I've been uh I've been back on my shit for about a week now. And it's brutal. It's brutal, boy. Look, surviving is brutal, boy. You know. I guess that's why I don't be in no shit with nobody, cause man, life already hard. You know what I mean? So Getting into it with niggas and the police and society and everything going on. It's a hard thing. So I guess that's why I just, I be battling with my own demons. Maybe I can start plexing on myself. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a video. As he's a Lee saying, fuck, he's a Leo. Then I'm going to make a response. So he's a Lee. Going to cut a video. And go in. On he's a Leo. And and cuss this bitch ass out. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. He's a Lee. Going to make a video saying, fuck he's a Leo. That'll do it. That'll give me a thousand dollars. That'll give me a thousand dollars. Shit. Being friendly. Hey, how y'all doing? See, I can't look at look at me. Look, I'm just old friendly ass motherfucker. 
Them people don't know nothing. Them people don't give a fuck about me. I'm saying, hey, how you doing? Hey there. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good day today, ain't it? <laughs> I was thinking about saying, hey, fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I was really thinking. So when I said, hey, how y'all doing? I was really want to say, hey, fuck y'all. <laughs> My YouTube is H-E-Z-E-L-E-O. <laughs> Some of bitches. I got a nice, I got a nice little chick coming. I got a nice little chick coming up with, up with, up with to the amount of a thousand dollars. But the next chick that's, that's working itself out right now, it ain't looking so nice. It ain't looking so nice. I guess because I'm on that motherfucking uh, app being Martha Stewart and shit. Cooking motherfucking nachos. <laughs> YouTube ain't for that. For, 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 but niggas like us, YouTube ain't for that. See, I just practice, I just practice not being nice. I don't even speak to him. I ain't speak to him. Yeah, like these people right here, I ain't gonna speak to them. They gonna have to speak to me. I'm gonna be mean. I'm being mean today. Nah, how y'all doing? <laughs> I couldn't even be mean. I couldn't even be mean. See, when I was a little child, I remember. And, 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 and this really goes to say this how life is. When I was a little child, my little brother used to get in all the trouble. He would get in all the trouble. And he would get all mama's love. He would get all mama's hugs. He would get all mama's consoling. He get all mama's one-on-one -on -one talking to. And I used to be jealous. I wanted some of them hugs. I wanted some of them one-on-one -on -one talking tools. I wanted some of them getting in the car, let's take a ride, boy. I wanted to go. But God damn it, I ain't did nothing bad enough to go. So one day, you know, boy, I walked outside. I walked outside and I said, what could I do to be bad? So the neighborhood dog ran by me, who I normally pet on the head. He ran by me. I said, get your motherfucking ass away from me. Yeah. He looked at me like, fuck wrong with this nigga. Oh, well. And he kept on going. So, yeah, okay. I'm building my armor. I'm bad today. So I walk through the neighborhood, all the neighborhood people who normally interact with me and deal with me. They say, what's up, Herb? You coming to play? And I looked around, and I looked at all of them. And I said, fuck y'all. I'm bad today. They like, damn. So I said, okay, it's time to activate this bad shit. I said, I'm going to the store. And I'm going steal. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't no thief. I ain't even know how to steal. But I say today, boy, I'm a bad actor. So I went to the corner store, which we go there four or five times a day, getting 50 cent cookies, getting ice cream by the paint, getting jungle juices, and everything like that. So I walked in the store, and I'm thinking, now, what could I steal that could compliment me being bad? Boy, I walked up to that counter. I looked at that clerk. She said, hey, Herbert Jean. How you doing today? I said, don't speak to me. I'm bad today. She said, oh, you just probably having a bad day, baby. Uh, what you want? I said, you know what I want? Something told me to steal the whole jaw a pickle pig feet. But I say, God damn. Nigga ain't gonna wanna be eating no goddamn pickle pig feet all day. <clears throat> so I say, okay, there's a big jaw of pickle pig feet sitting on the counter, and there's a big jaw 
a pickle sitting on the counter. Which one do I take to demonstrate that I'm bad right now? I ain't want the pig feet. So you know what I did? Boy, I grabbed that whole jar of pickles. She say, uh, you gonna buy one? I say, no. I'm taking this here. She say, boy, quit playing. And I just walked out with that jar of pickles and I hit that door and that bell went to ringing. She come from behind that counter. She say, boy, you bring them pickles back before I call your mama. That's what I wanted her to do. Call my mama. Because I'm bad today. I'm going to get me some attention. I think I'm, I think I'm feeling it. I just walked by four people looking at me. And I did not speak. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming back to me. I feel the way I felt when I stole them damn pickles. I just feel like I stole a jar of pickles just now. I did not speak to them four people. And they were looking up like little puppies, waiting on me to say, how y'all doing? I ignored them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting bad. I'm getting bad. Yeah. I looked her dead in her eyes, and I did not speak. I'm getting bad. I feel it. Look my skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting, look, my eyes evil. Y'all seen I had that fire in my eyes? Yeah, I'm getting bad. Nigga, don't run over me. Yeah, yeah. So I took that jar of pickles, boy, and I felt the badness coming on. And I walked home with that jar of pickles like motherfucking George Jefferson. And I got in the house and I sat them jar of pickles on the counter and opened that hoe up and bit me one. I say, damn, I didn't get no peppermints. I don't want no motherfucking pickle unless it got a peppermint shoved down in it. I done fucked up. So I bit that pickle and threw that bitch away or whatever, put the top back on the jaw, and, 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 and waited for my reward. Boy, my mama came home. I said, I'm finna give me some love now. My mama came home. All right. Damn, I laid there, you understand, and spoke. But my mama came home, boy. I said, ooh, she finna be mad, and she gonna give me some of that love. My mama came home and bust out laughing. She said, you bitch-ass nigga, you done cost me damn near $30 for a jar of pickles. Where them motherfucking pickles at? I said, uh, shit, I stole them. She said, give me that motherfucking jar of pickles. She fucked around and took me back to the store, slapped me upside the back of my motherfucking head, told me to apologize to them people. Them people gave her $30 back. She gave them a couple dollars for the one pickle I did bite off. And then when she brought me home, I was waiting on love. She said, boy, get the fuck out of my face. I said, God damn. This shit done motherfucking backfired. I got slapped upside the motherfucking head, brought back to the scene of the crime, and, 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 and was forced to apologize. I guess I wasn't bad at all. I guess I wasn't bad. And so a couple of days later, when my mama had time to think about it, she said, Herbert Jr., Come here, boy. I said, oh, shit. This shit kind of feel like some of that love I was looking for. She say, she put her arm around me. She say, now why in the hell did you go steal a jar of pickles? I say, because I'm bad. She say, motherfucker, you ain't bad. You my best child. You my good boy. I say, I'm your good boy. I say, if I'm your good boy, why I don't get no one-on-one -on -one ride around? Why I don't get no hugs and rub upside the head? Why I don't get no love if I'm your good boy? The motherfucking worst one get all the attention. She say, baby, your little brother is terrible. He bad. 
And I'm always spending time with him, correcting him. She say, baby, I love you so much. You are my best child. I don't have to worry about you because you always doing the right thing. You stay out of trouble. You do little shit in here and there, but you stay out of trouble. I don't need to attend to you every other moment correcting you. You know how to move. She say, so you stole that jar of pickles for some attention? I said, yeah. She say, come here, baby. And she put me all up in her bosom and hugged on me and kissed me about 10 times. I was on top of the world. <laughs> I think my big gullible pussy ass went back to that store two, three more times and apologized. Say, hey, ma'am. <laughs> that shit putting tears in my eyes because it's the God honest truth. I went back to that store. I apologize. You need me to clean up around here? That lady said, boy, you don't get your ass out. <laughs> but that's how it is, folks. That's the way of the world. If you on some good shit, trying to be positive, it's going to take you a minute to get where you're going. You probably heard the phrase, good guys finish last. And, and, and that's somewhat true. But I'm going to be honest with you. It is tempting that I jump online and, and, and say fuck you to about three niggas a month. But to be honest with you, that little thousand dollars or better, I don't even miss it. I don't even miss it. I eat damn near a thousand dollars worth of food in two weeks by myself. So I say all that to say, it is tempting knowing you can provoke and, and poke a stick and say derogatory shit and you'll get paid for it. But that's a form of selling out. That's a form of being desperate. That's desperation. But don't get me wrong. I'm not going to knock another individual for stooping low. Scraping the scab, being the bottom feeder who will utilize those techniques to pad their pockets. Because every work deserves a reward. You understand? Every work has a return. Every cause has an effect. So, because I have planted beautiful seeds because I have blessed others and I am a blessing to others over and over and over again because that's who God made me. I'm also harvesting and reaping the harvest of what I planted. I'm, 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 I'm sowing, I'm sowing and I'm reaping what I've sowed. What I've planted, my harvest is coming back. And basically, it's a lot of people showing love, saluting, donating, watching, subscribing, spreading. Now, is it as big as I want it to be? Because I know I've touched so many people around the southern region and beyond uh, as a human being. We become impatient sometimes, but it's all coming. The other day, a friend of mine told me he was in prison and was shocked that my name was a part of the whole UGK conversation, the whole Texas rap conversation, because he know me. We played marbles together. He said he was shocked, but he accepted that because he knew the work I put in. He said, but one of the things that blew his mind was one of the inmates was celebrating the fact that his baby mama or girlfriend was sending him some rap lyrics from a Texas artist. He was shocked and surprised 
that this individual received rap lyrics from he's a Leo, his neighborhood homeboy. And he said once the guy got the rap lyrics, he would be walking around the prison reciting the rhymes. Now my little brother and different people, you know, from TDC has told me a lot about, you know, situations like that, how people know about me, this and that, this and that, this and that. But we don't know the people we affect because we're not that, how could I say? We're not that um, extraterrestrial. Like we can't really take the pulse and the vibe of people all over the world until they show up and show you the love. Then you can kind of get a sense of it. But if niggas behind them walls that could be worrying about surviving their circumstances, how much time they got. So for somebody to celebrate me behind them walls, taking some lyrics that I sat down and wrote and celebrate that and feel like, hey, this is something that I want. He didn't know it, but I had a flame lit in me already. But when he gave me that information, he poured fuel on my flame. He lit me. He lit me up. You know, I'm talking to engineers by most studio time. I'm talking to my graphic designer, blam me with this. I'm talking to my DJ, blam me with that. You know what I mean? Because if the people gonna participate and salute and celebrate a trill one, a trill one gonna show up. And I'm out here right now investing in myself in this beautiful park. I'm talking about, man, it feels so good out here. I could lay on the ground and go to sleep. The birds chirping, the trees is putting just enough shade on me. God been good to me. So no, I can't get on YouTube and go to plexing with niggas for a couple of dollars. What I bring to the channel is me. And that's what I can consistently do. And that's who I can consistently be. And if that ain't enough, that just ain't enough. We're not coming plexed up, beefed up, this and that, this and that. We survived them years already. Me and my partner, hard time. He know me. I know him. We came up in the streets of Port Arthur. We seen the triumphs and the tribulations. We seen the busted up eyes, the bloody knuckles, the bullet holes in the houses, the exploding cars from cocktail bombs, the hospital visits, the stitches, the dead bodies. Did niggas forget that that's what them songs bring? When you sing them songs, the niggas forget that's the reward of them songs. So niggas who done been through all that shit already, they not trying to repeat that shit. You pick a nigga like me in hard time and a nigga could tell you over 25 to 50 stories about bloody situations. Because we actually from the motherfucking streets of Port Arthur. We actually from them dark corners and them dirty alleys and them bottle glasses and altercations and situations. So now God has blessed us to pass through that unscathed all them deadly situations, my nigga. All we got is a few little scars, a few little scratches, and some stories. Boys ain't walking different. Boys brains working. You know? Boy, you fortunate. And all y'all could relate. All y'all could relate. Because we wasn't born with no silver spoon in our mouths. We don't come from generational wealth. So all y'all can relate. So no, your big brother, your big uncle, your daddy, your grandfather, your homie, your nephew, however you see me, however you know me, 
I will not be jumping out there being erratic and, and, and delusional and just sparking drama for a dollar amount. I'd rather be a man and get up every day and go crank that truck and sell a t-shirt and sell a CD and sell a download, sell a car, sell a 18-wheeler. I'd rather be a hustler that still have my morals and values and integrity intact. And if that ain't enough, I don't know what to tell you. But the good thing about it, this video turned out so good, I'm gonna take it and download it and put it on YouTube and give me a couple of coins. But right now, I'm gonna turn up my walking a little bit so I can sweat more. You understand me? I'm trying to be better every day. And if God polishing me up to be the best I can be while I'm here and refrain from certain stuff, God, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm willing. I'm a participant. Come on, let's go. Put me in the fight. I'm waiting. So, with that being said, hey, appreciate everybody who support me. Rose, sorry for your loss. You know what I mean? The whole Viltz family. You know what I mean? Much love to y'all. Keep y'all head up. Love y'all. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's your boy, he's a Lee. Y'all got one for real. And when you choose to support me and back me, yeah, you chose the right one on that ballot. You chose the right one. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, long live Mama West and PMC and my mama and my brother and everybody we lost. I'm out.